guys. So I did a video a couple bits back that was basically on the whole Trump Stormy Daniels affair. And basically we there's been a lot of things that have been going around and stuff like that. And I found it necessary to kind of elaborate a bit more on the whole situation now that there's been more that's been exposed of it. And of course, any other updates that might become worthy of reporting, I will, of course, do. Um, what we know so far from the whole situation, and it's not going to take long. I mean, basically, I can sum everything up into a couple of key points. We know that, number one that um, Donald Trump's personal lawyer, Michael Cohen, has uh, allegedly paid Stormy Daniels $130,000 in hush money, basically to buy her silence, a gag order, if you will, monetary gag order. Save your jokes for later. Um, but this happened back in 2016, um, before... Uh, the presidential election, because very obviously something of this stature could have derailed Trump's chances of becoming president. Now, now that he is president, no one seems to give a damn, but we're still doing this anyway. Um, supposedly, there was in March 2018, uh, Daniels had filed a lawsuit against Trump, uh, claiming that the non disclosure agreement that she had signed was invalid because Trump had never personally signed it. Um, and if we were to believe a lot of the other things that Trump says, in which he completely has denied any sort of non-disclosure agreement or anything of the sort, then I would say, yes, the argument is definitely invalid. I mean, the whole point of the matter is, is that Trump entered into a verbal contract with Stormy Daniels now, whether this t where, where exactly this took place is yet to be known. However, what Mr. Trump and his lawyers may not know is that California has an oral contract sort of law. I don't know how many other states have this, but I know that in the state of California, if two parties enter into an oral, a verbal agreement, that is about as binding as it would be if it was written. Now, yes, typically you probably should put something down on paper, have something, you know, for your records in the future, because, you know, one person's word against another, you know, is going to be what it is. But essentially, you know, if they, sign, if they basically agreed to this on verbal basics in California... Trump doesn't have a leg to stand on because a verbal agreement is just as good as a written one, at least in California. Now, another thing that has um, been revealed is that in her interview with 60 Minutes, Daniel said that she and Trump had had sex and that she had been threatened in front of her daughter and later, uh, later signed a non-disclosure agreement. Now, um, one of the threats that has been made ab um, about her in front of her daughter was that someone came up to her not too long ago and basically said, uh, uh, leave Trump alone, forget the story, you know, that's a nice little girl you have there, it'd be ashamed if something happened to her mother. So not only now is she facing a lot of scrutiny for simply coming forward and, you know, exposing this, people are now resorting to threats, and it's not known if this is a Trump supporter, or if this could even be somebody within the Trump government. So, one needs to ask, is Stormy Daniels' life in danger? Now, I'm not going to go into the whole situation that she's a pornographic actress, and that, frankly, pornography is the exploitation of women, plain and simple, for the profit of capitalism. We could go into that debate all night, all day, and into the next couple of years. That's irrelevant in this situation. She's still a woman. She still has legal rights. She's taking her legal rights to where they, they properly need to go. And she's simply 
feels that she's been offended or violated in some way and that the justice system needs to do its job and, you know, actually impart justice. Basically, Trump has, you know, he's not upheld his side of the bargain. He's not, and, you know, it's been well documented that there's been other issues going on within his government, and she felt it necessary. This is the best course that this right now, for her own story, she felt that it was necessary to come forward and just be honest because she has a right to. Um, one thing that's also clear to keep in mind, too, is that on um, March 26, 2018, Trump and his lawyers have now outright, you know, virulently denied that she that there was ever an affair, which is interesting considering that Cohen literally paid her $130,000, a mere pittance to what, you know, he, that she could have been paid to basically just shut her up. So, you know, right there goes to show that they're covering something up. If Cohen was already directly involved in shutting her up, there's obviously something to shut up. So them vehemently denying this affair doesn't make any sense given the actions of before. In addition to the fact that... Um, Recently, uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the White House press secretary, had even gone on the record stating that um, Mr. Trump had no had no knowledge of any sort of arbitration agreement or non-disclosure agreement, and that they had won a victory in arbitration. They never were very specific as to what this was, and basically right there also goes to show that there was some sort of legal action that they had supposedly won. Some arbitration agreement that took place, some non-disclosure agreement that took place. Something happened where there was some sort of some sort of meeting within the lines during this whole hectic process. So in in due, in due process, she she indirectly admitted that there was something going on. And supposedly Trump wasn't too happy about that. What I want to touch on and kind of close up on really on this whole thing is the fact that she's being threatened by this mystery person. And it really is kind of, kind of in, is something to talk about because God forbid something did happen to this lady, then we know that something real, that something real went, you know, went down, that, you know, she was killed for basically saying too much. She was killed for whatever, you know, and essentially all this woman is trying to do is speak out and right a wrong that she felt she has been grossly offended by. So this whole point of somebody saying, you know, threatening her in front of her daughter, in front of a child and invoking Trump's name doesn't make this go away doesn't make this any better for anybody. And not only that, you're talking about taking away the mother, a loving mother, to a child. Letting this girl basically, you know, either be raised by a father or basically go in, you know, by family members of some kind or go into the foster care system where she's going to probably be abused. So you're basically threatening this child's mother for basically because she's out there going after, you know, going after your sainted Fuhrer. So I'm sorry, there is no just cause for that. So I don't know what the case is. We, you know, aren't going to ever fully know whether what is true and not true because we weren't there. We didn't see it happen that we would uh, but this is all wrapped up in a nice little thing to kind of say what we know you know key points about this, this case and this is obviously something that's going to go on for a while and one last thing I think it's kind of odd 
at the Republicans say nothing when Trump's basically accused of any scandal because they hold all the cards, all the power right now. But when Bill Clinton did it, they were so quick to attack and just try to sling Bill Clinton through the mud. Is either one better than the other? No. Is either case, you know, any less abhorrent? No. These men exploited poor women, you know, and then tried to basically shut them up. So the way that I look at it, if Bill Clinton can get impeached, you know, or should be impeached for, you know, basically having, you know, oral sex in the Oval Office, Donald Trump should be impeached for something that, you know, he f that basically has come to light and has pretty much tainted the image of the presidency of the United States. I mean, Donald Trump does a lot to taint the presidency and himself in general, but point being, this doesn't look good. Either way you slice it. And if one president can be impeached for a sex scandal, so should this man. Also given the fact that the man also has had really cozy ties with Russia. So the whole no collusion sort of thing, we, it's like whether there is or there isn't, his very close business ties have suggested that this man may be, may have committed some sort of illegal act. He's selling presidential seals on cups and shirts in the Trump Tower for his own profit which, again, is illegal. But all that's completely irrelevant to this video, and of course no one's going to give a damn once this video goes live, so why am I wasting my time? I'm Red Pagan Nick, this has been Red Pagan Corner, and I will see you next time. <laughs> Sell your soul, that's the sun.